Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between, welcome to the Real Honest Radio Podcast. This is your host. The real honest one, the really frustrated one, and the normal one, John Ritland, co-hosted by my best friend. The anti-cornet, the Terminator. I am not the ant- anyway, moving on from that. Uh, yes, you can probably tell from the title what we're going to talk about here. Oh boy. Alright. That's um, a spicy meat to ball. I am not going to repeat what Cornette said. I addressed how I felt initially at the end of my NWA Power Episode 7 review. You guys can check that out if you want. The clips are floating around online. I'm sure you can find it if you haven't already somehow not seen it if you're on Wrestling Twitter at all. Oh, you're talking about Cornette. Oh, you're talking yeah. about the review. Uh, let's make it clear here, guys. Let's unpack all this stuff. One, the NWA got... You know, re- had him resign. My guess is they probably said, look, we can say that you're going to resign or we can fire you. Mm-hmm. And they really don't want to do that. So they decided to just do this. What Cornette said, uh, again, I'm going to, in the interest of full disclosure, I laughed at what he said because I'm an equal opportunity offender. I've also heard far worse yeah, things. Yeah, there are laws about that. There are. That being said... And about 200 yards from a school. Yeah, j- Fortunately, I'm not like that. He, <laughs> not he, that kind of equal opportunity offender. Fortunately, not that. It, I mean, I'm not TJP or Jerry Lawler. Anyway, moving on from that. Um, yeah, like, I, I get it. He was going back to the greatest hits. You know, people tune in to see Jim Cornette. They like to hear about the old times. Uh, some things should be left there, though. <laughs> the NWA wanted to do a throwback. I just didn't think they were going to do a throwback show to the casual racism. Yeah. And so it really brings up the thought... Does Jim Cornette have anything to offer the current wrestling scene? Yes and no. Yeah? Yes and no. As far as a podcast as a window back to like how uh, like his stories, sure. As far as how he views stuff on AEW and NXT, some of it is a bit too harsh. I do also want to add really, really quickly, I am more than okay with the NWA getting rid of him, and we're going to come back to them on that. Well, he got rid of himself, quote-unquote. I mean, not that anybody can see on camera, but, you know, in the largest quotations possible. This is something that... I like listening to his podcast. I also recognize that there are things that he shouldn't say. Yes, people start floating around the thing of him saying a certain derogatory slur about black people from, like, a Smoky Mountain Wrestling meeting, greet, meet and greet dinner thing um, in the early 90s. And I wasn't okay with him saying that either. He also addressed that on his podcast and at least seemed apologetic for what he said. Now, whether he meant it or not, I don't know. I'm not a fucking mind reader. I took him at his word. Still wasn't okay that he said it, but am I surprised that it came out that Cornette had said that years and years ago? No. Mm -hmm. Who is one of his influences? Bill Watts. You want to know the shit that Bill Watts said? Oh boy. Bill Watts said a lot of stuff. Um, the product of their time should be left in that time. No, no, and I agree with you. I am not making excuses for Cornette. Like, I, I'm not upset that he's gone from the NWA. Well, part of me is, because I enjoyed his commentary with Joe Galley. But I get why the NWA got rid of him. Mm-hmm. Why they decided to get rid of him. We're going to come back to Cornette here in a bit, though. And besides, it doesn't really surprise me that Billy Corgan would allow something like that. This is the same guy who's appeared on InfoWars yeah. and likes to talk about chemtrails. And that's the thing... Wait, you actually seriously talk about that? Um, that's another thing I want to go into, though. The company itself is not absolved of this blame. And I don't know if it's on Corgan, I don't know if it's on Lagana, or however the hell you say his name, or whoever the hell's the producers are. These shows were in the can for, like, two months. Nobody thought to look at this and say, maybe we should edit that out and we should talk to Cornette and say, hey, after the pay-per-view, we're gonna ship you out. Yeah. There are some jokes that folk will laugh at in private. And there are some things that have no business being on public TV. Then there are some things... Or even on YouTube or whatever NWA power is on. No, no, you're right, YouTube. I mean, of course, it's a good thing I never say anything offensive on my channel. Right. No one believes that, do they? Yeah, the difference being is we get maybe 200 views. That's true. Tops on some of our views. And Uh, they get a little bit more than us. They do get a lot... And that's the thing. Building this brand, going back to with NWA, though, why did no one think to edit this out? And I'm not saying hide the stuff that Cornette said. That's not it. Because they had this stuff 
for months. Imagine be, months. being the guy who's just in a dark room editing yeah. a, a video and being like, <clears throat> okay, that's funny. And then just moving on with it. And not, think, and not thinking, and this is why you should probably... So, here's the thing, guys. I'm going to get into a little SJW thing for you guys. So, if you're triggered by that, I'm sorry. Okay. You little snowflakes can not worry about social justice. Anyway, okay. this is why you diversify your staff. Having yeah. the diversity of backgrounds, and not just based on qualification, but also sometimes you just need somebody who might look at that and go, Damn. No, 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 no. Yeah. No. <laughs> I agree with you. Like someone who would have looked at that Jordan Mollister and be like, no. <laughs> I I agree with you there. It's it's a systematic thing where things that worked in the past aren't necessarily going to work now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think back to a Roddy Piper comment when he was feuding with Mr. T. You do have to appeal to everybody. Yeah. If you're going to be a successful business, you need to do this. That's true. There are times we're going, the, 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 we're going too far in the other direction gets a little ridiculous. I get what you're saying. Roddy Piper, as an example, it was like 1985, 1986. Yeah. Or no, I think it was 85. Building up his feud with Mr. T on the Tuesday Night Titans thing that they did where it was making fun of a John, the Johnny Carson show. And he said about Mr. T, Roddy Piper did, the only guy in the world I know that wears more chains than his ancestors. Whew. And this is Roddy Piper saying that. I mean, it's not like uh, Roddy Piper. Go this ahead. is Roddy Piper. Who painted his... Yes. Yeah, painted himself black and... Yeah. 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 I just thought about that, actually. After I'm not racism. saying anything like Roddy was racist. I'm just saying he was a lot of tone deaf. Yeah. Good thing. And I'm... this is why you diversify your staff. Yeah, diversifying the staff isn't an issue. It's just, again, I think that there is a lot. Is there blame on Cornette? Yes, yeah. but also he is a product of his time. Again, not excusing what he said. I didn't think this relationship with, the, um, with them was necessarily going to last. Yeah. But that being said, that being said... Guys, Cornette is just one piece, and not the anime, of all this other stuff going on. Because one, one piece of a white hooded pie. What, Hogan's back? Um, that's, That wouldn't be white. That would be tanned leather. That's This is another thing that I think we need to look into, though, guys. It, serious question. Why is it that everybody is crying out against Cornette? And you're right to do so if you don't if if you're against stuff that Cornet said and you feel that this justifies how you feel or ain't it, yeah. it's fine. It's totally fine. I get it. I'm frustrated with what he did too. I'm upset about it. Again, I laughed at the stuff because I'm I, I find offensive humor funny, but I recognize why people get upset. However, where was this kind of energy and hatred when Lawler said about Humberto, he's like a jumping bean? Which is about this which is about as bad as this. Mm-hmm. It is about as bad as this. I'm, again, I'm not going to repeat the cornet lines. You can find out what the hell this stuff is. But why in the world are people telling me that, oh, well, it's just, it's just what Cornette said. I'm not going to watch NWA Power because they had because they have Cornette on there, or they had Cornette on there, and they still have a few taped episodes. Don't punish the wrestlers. Punish the individual. And... That's and, and Corny's probably going to be spending the next few days pulling to Brad Shepard and retweeting everybody who supports him. I And then blocking everybody who doesn't. And he's going to get a very small, small corner of the internet. There Almost are... as small as Brad mm. Shepard feels yeah. right now. Yeah, there are people... No, nothing's going to feel as small as Brad Shepard, piece of shit. <laughs> but anyway... Oh, that could mean two things. Uh, it, means, it means one <laughs> thing, and people know what the fuck it means. I'm going to say this. With, yes. with Cornette, I will still listen to his podcast. You guys can hate me for that. I don't care because I still find his podcast entertaining. Whether I agree with what he said or not, I still find it entertaining. I also want to add that if you're going to punish the NWA staff and wrestlers because he was there, okay, where was this energy for when Orton dropped the N-word on that Twitch stream this year after he's been known to do this kind of stuff as well? Hogan. I think people feel a little bit bigger going up against a smaller brand than WWE who would ignore their every whimper. Fair. But at the same time... There was an uproar over Orton, but everyone also knew that nothing would be done. And that's another thing about it. I'm not saying that people can't be... not want to watch NWA Power. You don't want to watch it? Fine. Yeah. I'm still going to watch it because people are like, I'm going to go watch Impact. That's got Michael Elgin in it that has pissed on a woman. Mm -hmm. That was said... In a shoot interview. 
Owens talked about that. Hmm. Okay, you're going to support something like that, but some, but a joke that I understand people are upset about. Be, be, you know, be like the same with your criticisms and your willingness to not watch a product. Be consistent. Consistent. That's it. I could. I was drawing the uh, word. I was drawing a blank. Don't on worry. Word. I know words. <clears throat> Do you, you know more than the best words because you would run things a lot better than the dumb fuck right now. Yeah. Um. Then again, a lobotomized chimpanzee could do that, but... I don't think Eric is qualified. <laughs> I was thinking Bischoff for a second. And just, anyway, um... No, lobotomized chimpanzee is better. No, here's the whole thing about it. Yeah. I get about NWA Power. I've enjoyed NWA Power. I've enjoyed the throwback feel. I've liked the fact that they've been featuring some of their women. That they have, you know, they're building some storylines. I'm going to order the end of the fire pay-per-view. Maybe you and I will watch it. I don't fucking know. When is it? Uh, December 14th. I might. <laughs> um, let me know then we can pre-order it and we can get it for a cheaper price on Fight TV um, it's only twenty four ninety five even after the pre-order which isn't bad at all mm. and I like a good amount of the, uh, of the roster there but people are like oh, I'm going to watch Impact in instead which has some people some questionable people on there the whole Rich Swan situation whether the charges were dropped or not doesn't mean it didn't happen yeah. and then the Elgin thing and a few others and oh Cornette's an easy target because he makes himself an easy target, and I'm not. I'm not absolving anybody. Mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm certainly not absolving him. Mm -hmm. But oh, it's it's a lot of AEW fans that get upset, and that's another thing I want to touch on. What what is your ultimate feel about this thing with Cornette, though? Um, uh, I think he should apologize. He should. I agree. Even like, if he it, just it, knew it was an interest apology, you know. Yeah. Um, just like. You gotta acknowledge that the times are different, Jim. You cannot like today's wrestling, but you can't just opt to forget that today people are a lot more aware yeah. of human suffering. Yeah. Well, people were aware back then. The thing that made me laugh were about... Were though? Some. I mean, when, when did he used to say this? The 80s. You mean back when they thought AIDS was the gay disease? There are people who still think that, yes. by the way, just so you know. Yeah, um... And those people are a lot smaller now. The doors are taking over. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, it's enough out of you. Um, the don't punish the NWA brand just because. Yeah. They be, be, just because they had Cornette. They may still have them on some taped episodes. They may edit out and just have Joe Galley on there and make cuts so they don't feature Cornette at all. That's possible. I don't know what they're gonna do. If you don't want to watch the NWA brand in general, that's fine. To the yeah. people that are saying, oh, because they cut Cornette, because of this, because they caved in, I'm not going to watch the NWA brand anymore. Then you guys were going to drop something at some point. If you're only watching a wrestling show for the commentary, then the wrestling show has something wrong with it. And that's how most people will look at it. Yeah. Um, but you've got great talent on there. Nick Aldis. Thunder Rosa. She's a great talent. Yes. Ricky Starks is on there. They Yeah, Ricky Starks. They have Aaron Stevens, who is less of a great talent. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um... It's not that he's bad, but he's way past his prime. You have Trevor Murdoch that's made a comeback. He's pretty good. You have... Yeah, he's pretty tough, I've heard. Yep. Anyway. So, we have the wild card. By the way, yeah, no one, no one's saying anything about Thomas Latimer, who, you know, had <laughs> domestic abuse charges against him, but oh no, that's okay. I don't care if they were dropped. I didn't think there was something else going on there, and he punched out a cop during a drunken incident. That, that, that's smart. Um, Royce Isaac, so he's cool. Yeah. yeah, we we met yes, him as when he was uh, teaming with uh, Jarrell Nelson. Is that what his name? Jarrell. Yeah, and I think they actually still occasionally do that. I think they still occasionally do that. We just haven't. They seen are very him. talented. And very good. I don't team. know if Royce Isaac still has it, but he had a fantastic mustache. He does actually. He does. Excellent. Um, Excellent. Yes, he does. There are some other good I'm teams. I'm gonna save that comment for later. You proud of that one? Yeah, you should be. Um, there's some other good ones. They have Allison K, who used to be Sienna on Impact. I mean, I'm going over the stuff about the NWA because I want to show you guys, well, you know, with my words, the be not the best words because I know better words, but how the, the NWA bestiest brand is actually... best words. That's good English. The best English. I like the yeah. NWA brand. <laughs> I like the NWA brand. Mm -hmm. And I, get, I, I can understand that people don't want to watch it. But it's both sides. I don't want to watch it because Cornette's on there. Okay. Oh, I'm not going to watch it because Cornette got kicked off of there. You guys have a right to choose and watch what the hell you want. Just don't punish the talents just because one thing changed. 
I sat through thinking thing with WWE. Now we're going to transition to this kind of stuff. WWE. Mm -hmm. People are still sticking with the company where the chairman of the company said the N-word to John Cena while Booker T was off was just off screen. Which, again, is not excusing anything the Cornette said. But that's pretty bad. The yeah. whole people like Booker T can't be champion. The whole thing of the Mexicools and all that. And yes, those were years ago, but people dredged Prime stuff time. up. Primetime. And the Street Profits. The Street Profits is a little different. Kind, kind of in the same vein? Kind of? No, not or, really. Well, at least what I thought not initially. Not even close to Crime Time. Oh, no, no. Crime Time was way worse. Street Profits can be viewed in a lot of different ways. Yeah. They could. And not all of them bad. Yeah. They crime had, Time, on the other hand, it's kind of implied. They had Naomi... They had Naomi basically playing up the stereotypes for a while. I mean, thankfully, she isn't anymore. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean. They were having her do a lot of that stuff. And it was kind of... It wasn't even offensive. It just was making her character one-dimensional when her athleticism could stick out. Yeah. There's a systematic thing with racism. Jerry Lawler... I mean, Jerry Lawler. It's kind of funny that Cornette loves Lawler so much. And maybe you kind of get the whole thing of... Why? Okay. <laughs> Cornette. Cornette's a big fan of Lawler. Hmm. Lawler's a big fan of Cornette. Or at least as far as I know. You maybe you can kind of get with that part of the country. It's proof that just someone's political beliefs doesn't mean that they can't have a little bit of an issue. W I'm a little bit country. Mm -hmm. And I'm a little bit of a cunt. <laughs> I'm a little bit thank you, fuck you, bye. No, um, anyway. So um, with WWE, they have a lot of stuff with their own racism. No one, mm -hmm. there were people that were upset, myself included, they brought Hogan back. Yeah. I'm not equating did, Hogan. Did to you say some people or most people? Uh, mostly those people. Mostly people. I'm not helping my case, am I, Chris? No. no. Uh, most people were pretty upset. <laughs> right. It, if there are people that forgot Hogan, or forgave Hogan, fine. I'm not equating Hogan to Cornette. I mean, obviously one drew way more money and didn't have to give it to an ex-wife, and the other is uh, Cornette. But also, if people offer fruitful apologies, mm -hmm. I am will you know, or truthful apologies, they actually mean it, I'm willing to forgive. This is going to be a big test for Cornette, like you said. With Hogan, I believe he's more sorry that he got caught than anything else. It is what it is. Yeah. That's, that, that's, the whole thing with uh, Hogan is dead and buried in this kind of, well, I mean, not dead and buried, but it's something where the company's going to bring him back. WWE considers himself bulletproof as far as their contracts and stuff like that. They have... A bunch of TV contracts, and they have this where really the live events don't have to draw that much because they're getting so much from TV contracts. The problem is that if they burn their audience more, they're going to get to where nothing will work and nothing will bring them back. Yeah. Ratings are falling. NXT ain't even drawing a million people on USA. And I'm not that I expect it to. AEW is barely drawing a million people at its height. I think it drew like a million something. The first. I think it was 1.5 <laughs> at the beginning. The first week or two, I think the first two weeks. Yeah. And NXT, I think, actually did get close to a million, or just over a million a couple times. But... Yeah, you gotta shed some weight, but, you know. <laughs> can't be jelly forever. Debbie... You got enough to say about that motherfucker. But anyway, um... <laughs> it... WWE also needs to shoulder a lot of blame for a lot of racist stuff they've done, and a mm -hmm. lot of offensive shit they've done. And sometimes I think people are like, I'll pick this company over this company... I'll pick on this brand over this brand. We all have brand loyalty. I have a loyalty to wrestling. I just want wrestling to be good. I want wrestling to be fun. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't particularly <laughs> care what brand of wrestling I'm watching, as long as it's not uh, death matches. Yeah, death match wrestling. Sorry, if you guys like death match wrestling, any you guys listening, fine, cool, whatever. Yeah. Death well, I'm, match not, I'm not uh, particular to any brand. Like, I'll watch AEW in equal measure that I'll watch NXT. Um, I will tolerate Raw and SmackDown. Mainly because we get we get at least three hundred views a week from yeah. just those, and that's on a slow week. Yeah. Um. There's a lot of good wrestling out there. There's a lot of bad wrestling out there. AEW's got some questionable people on there. Jake Hager, uh, Jericho's said questionable shit. Also had our or no Donald Trump Jr. on this podcast. I mean, that's not surprising. But then again, that's business thing. You need to get eyes on your product and. 
Controversy creates cash, as a certain individual likes to say. Well, I'll say this much. Uh, B- Bischoff, I had unsubscribed from Bischoff's podcast because if I heard Conrad Thompson quote Meltzer once more, I was going to slap him across the face. Um, Conrad Thompson, look, the guy's an idiot. He's a fanboy of a fanboy? Yes, and it's just, whatever, he is what he is. I mean, I guess he's married to Flair's other daughter, which I actually forgot that Flair had another daughter. Um... And no, I don't mean that. No, you know, I'm going to save that question for later. What? How does that work? Flair has a couple daughters. No. How does Conrad land her? I don't know. Um, what? Go ahead. Is it Roger Rabbit? Just like. Oh, God damn it, Chris. Not, thanks. Thanks. Thanks for that. Oh, just. Uh, anyway. So. <laughs> Here, here's the thing about it, guys. To in closing on this topic, and then we'll probably wrap this stuff up pretty soon because there isn't a ton of stuff really to talk about. Though we'll go back to WWE here in a minute. I don't think that the NWA brand or the talent should suffer because of this. Now, if people behind the scenes, it turns out to be a really tumultuous thing behind the scenes, and the brand dissolves because of that. That's going to affect a lot of wrestlers, and that's unfortunate. Yeah, it's the same thing with AEW. And the whole thing of how they need to present a product that's a little more serious or otherwise it's going to start turning fans off. They they need to... Hang on. They need to broaden. This is where I'm going to get in a little bit of an AEW rant. They need to broaden and not just appeal to the being the elite fans. That will only take them so far. Correct. And I'm sorry, but you got to get... You, you got to do good comedy. The librarians are not good comedy. Just because Leva Bates looks good does not mean you need to put her in that character. Discount uh, Bobby Roode and Rick Roode, Peter Avalon, you don't need to... In- Some people can rock a mustache. Tom Selleck, he can rock a mustache. Uh, Royce Isaacs, he can rule a mustache. Rusev, definitely mustache. Uh, Peter Avalon, nobody, you gotta shave. You, you, and you would know something about mustaches. Um, I'm kind of an expert. Yeah, you are. It, in the Dark Order... Get rid of the fucking dark. Just maybe don't get rid of him. I don't want people to be about a job, but yeah, fucking but change the gimmick. Stop trying to make it happen. Just drop the gimmick forever for good. No one can make this work. Um, and they don't leave any kind of impact whenever they appear. I don't. Care. I don't care about them yeah. at all. Um, with some of those as, prof- as their characters anyway. Right, and even if prefer- I mean Grayson's fine in the ring, but just. It's a dumb gimmick. Uh, as for the from women... Bad creative. Yeah, just a stupid idea for bad creative. Um, for the women, B Priestley, I don't really care for B. I just don't. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, um, there are other women that are... Eh. Brandy, for the love of fucking Christ, stop featuring Brandy Rhodes. If I'm going to say... Triple H only got the job because of who he's married to. Don't tell me Brandy would be featured here if she wasn't married to Cody. I'm sorry, but it's true. Somebody has to say it, and I'll take the heat for it. I don't fucking care. Brandy is, as far as a TV character, is useless. As a person, I've got nothing against her. I don't know her as a person. Yeah. But am I wrong? I mean, would Brandy be there if she wasn't married to Cody? No. Okay. Would she be featured on TV if she didn't at least have a relation to somebody in a high-ranking uh, you know, position in that company? I don't know. Awesome Kong needs a manager. She just needs a manager with uh, more charisma than that uh, that could fit. Chorizo. Chorizo. Um, it's like chorizo, but she's not as spicy. Just no, except when people attack her on Twitter. I will not attack. The one thing I'm, I am sick of, I will stick up for Brandy on though. I'm sick of people attacking her because of her race. Guys, come on. There are plenty of uh, reasonable reasons to attack her for, and her race isn't one of them. This ain't it. Um, Janella. He's gar- he's a garbage wrestler. Mm-hmm. I've stayed. I don't think he. I do. I think he's as unsafe as some people say. No, I did have a bit of an issue with that movie. Did the stunt, but I don't think that he went out there to intentionally hurt him. I just don't think he knows what the fuck he's doing because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. I've seen him twice live, and it's very obvious that he's he's a fucking idiot. Um, apparently, great to his fans. Fine, cool. I think he's garbage. I don't know what you think of him. Um, I think he's good at what he does in terms of. He gets the crowd's attention. He holds the crowd's attention. Um, and as a performer, you need that factor. Um, do I think I could use more of him being serious like he was on the last time? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it's fair. You, you need to save the levity <laughs> for times where it's needed. They also need to drop the hardcore matches happening all the time. Yeah. Because you're going to burn yourself out like impacted like WWE did. one or did. two hardcore matches during a pay-per-view. One hardcore match per pay-per-view, I should say. Not a bad idea. It's a good spectacle, and you need spectacles in your shows. You can't make it the center point of everything. No. Um, but sometimes a hardcore match for a title may not be a bad idea. It may be like the only way that a feud could be settled. They also need... Have one on TV once a month. The builds need to make sense. <clears throat> yeah, they do. You don't need to just chuck stuff out. Hello, Hell in a Cell. I didn't see you there. Mainly because the red light was blinding me. Um, Elimination Chamber! Wow, we didn't see this one coming. How could <laughs> we have known? Oh, wait, there's a pay-per-view named after it. Oh. Yeah. Um, two more. When there's only one way to sell it, and you don't have William Regal. Ha! <laughs> wait, how would William Regal sell it? He has one solution. War Games! There we go. Um, two more that I just don't care for. Sorry, Marco. Stay the fuck out of the ring. Keep him out. He's useless. He's fucking useless. He's not useless. To me, he's useless. Okay. It just... It... There are plenty of people that are bad people that should not be in wrestling. This much is true. This much is obvious. All right. I'm not saying Marco's a bad person. I'm just saying as a wrestler, I'd rather, ga rather gouge my goddamn eyes out than watch him be competitive. As a wrestler, it just, let's just put children in the goddamn ring if we're going to do this. And I don't mean for charity stuff. They did that one thing where that Orange Cassidy dressed up kid pinned Cody after uh, AEW. Cool. All right. I'm wrong with that. Okay. Um, and the final one, Orange Cassidy. Just fucking stop it, guys. He gets the crowd's attention. People like him. Fine. Cool. Some people also like bludgeoning themselves over the head with sharp objects, apparently. Um, and light tubes, which I don't get. Maybe I just am out of touch, and maybe I'm just not cut out for wrestling anymore. I don't know. I like a lot of stuff in wrestling, but it's just... You have to do comedy right, and to me, that's not comedy done right. You stated your opinions, I stated my opinion, so that's where we're gonna... I guess we'll close on that, probably. Yeah, <laughs> so all in all... Shit exists, and how you deal with it is up to you. Me personally, like the Jim Cornette situation, I've said my piece on that. I think he should apologize, and yeah. I think he doesn't have anything additional to offer the wrestling community as a whole. No other company should hire him. I would say at least for another year, and with how much he doesn't Not wanna... on the mic. No, no, no. And with how much he doesn't yeah. want to travel... Man, man knows the business. He knows how to run it. But that doesn't mean he should be the one to be the voice. Not anymore. I 100% agree. Um, and then in AEW, they got some kinks to work out. Uh, like, they're very kinky about beating each other hard. Um, Thanks, Chris. You're welcome. Jimmy Havoc wears leather. Just saying. I hey. don't mind Havoc. <laughs> I don't mind Havoc, actually. Havoc's pretty cool. I know. Uh, oh, I but know. anyway, yeah, that, that just... Folk need to grow up, even if you're already old. I can't but, help but feel... But also learn to laugh at the right things. Is this directed at me? No. You're not old. Yet. Are you sure? Because that sounded like it was guy directed at me. Oh. <laughs> yet. Mm, yet yeah, give, give it give it give it till 39 in like two months uh, anyway. Uh, but anyway folks that's it we are going to close this show out make sure to leave your thoughts in the comments and everything and if you want to throw hate at me okay that's fine but if you want to throw love on me i would very much appreciate it follow me at twi on twitter at the underscore derbinator throw the hate at me at well you know my fucking twitter handle it's not that hard to figure out yeah it's in the but description then, yeah but anyway right why did you anyway I am John Ritlin. That is the Durbinator. And we will see you for AEW Dynamite to review in a few hours. And thank you for joining us on this Jim Cornette Johnny Bus.